I'm Devin Bonebreak, host of the Golf Fix, and we're here on the range at the beautiful Mission Inn Resort and Club at the legendary El Campeon Golf Course. And we're here today with Full Swing, and we're talking about how to have a high smash factor with your driver. Generally, about a 1.5 smash factor is best, but let's talk about what really is the smash factor. What does it constitute, and how do you get a higher smash factor? So essentially what it's going to be is going to be the differential between the ball speed and the club speed, the ratio. So for instance, if you had a 1.5 smash factor and I swung at 100 miles an hour, my ball speed would be 150 miles an hour. So one more time, if my smash factor was 1.3 and I swung at 100 miles an hour, my ball speed would only be 130. Generally, every mile an hour of ball speed is two yards. You can imagine that'd be a 40 yard loss right there just because of the smash factor. So let's talk about how we get a better smash. First and foremost, we need to hit it right in the center of the club face. The more it's in the center, the better ball speed you're gonna get. One of the worst places to hit it is gonna be in that low heel area. So I'm gonna demonstrate trying to hit a really good drive and then I'm gonna try to hit a bad one at a similar speed, but try to hit it on the low heel. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take my setup. So to hit it solid, you wanna make sure the setup's good off the inside of the lead foot, upper center back a little bit, relax grip pressure, and really just full commitment to this shot with a nice full turn going back. All right, love that. Absolutely smashed right down the middle. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. So exactly, 1.5, I swung at 110 miles an hour, and my ball speed was about 160. So really, really good there. A lot more distance total over there, almost 300 yards. So now I'm gonna set up on the low heel. If I hit it on the low heel, swinging at about 110, that's gonna tend to make it go a lot shorter. And you're gonna see that that smash factor is a lot lower. So I'm just purposely setting up here, low heel. I'm gonna try to make the same speed of golf swing. Ball speed will be lower and therefore my smash factor will also be lower. So a lot more on the neck of the club. That's why I got a lot of fade much lower smash factor, more like a 1.41. So I lost about 35 yards there simply because I hit it on the low heel. Now, let's talk about the other factors that determine how high your smash factor is. So also any sort of glancing hit, if I'm really outside in with an open club face, it's gonna produce less ball speed off the face. It's kind of like if someone was to punch you and they just glanced your arm, you wouldn't feel as much of that energy being transferred versus a direct hit. So the more that the face and path are lined together, the more ball speed you're gonna get. Finally, the more that you're able to hit up on the ball with a little bit of shaft lean, that's gonna produce less of a glancing hit from a vertical perspective. So if you're hitting down and adding loft, five degrees down with a lot of loft, that's gonna produce a lot of spin and more of a glancing hit. The lower the dynamic loft is with a rising attack angle, that creates what's called a lower spin loft. Lower spin loft, you're gonna get more ball speed, and you're generally gonna get a higher smash. Let me hit one more. I'm gonna try to feel like I can produce the best swing possible. I'm gonna try to have a good path and face. I'm gonna try to hit it right in the center of the face. And I wanna make sure that my spin loft is a little bit lower, which would essentially be the club face angle getting closer, never the exact same as the attack angle. So the bigger that differential is, the less ball speed, the less differential, the more ball speed. One reason why Bryson wanted to have a lower lofted driver when he hit for more distance. Absolutely smash, definitely what I'm looking for. 1.51, actually the highest that I've seen. 1.5, 1.51 is generally the highest that you're gonna see, but if you catch it just a little bit high toe, sometimes you can get a little bit more ball speed. And that's one thing I really like about having a full swing launch monitor is I can bring it to the range, I can get instant feedback. Every time I make a mistake, I can see why, I know how to fix it, and then I can see the results after I make the improvements. So it's very satisfying, it's very gratifying, it makes a big difference for my game improving.